So thank you for joining us again here on windservetoots.com. Uh, we're starting to pull together the uh, end product of some of our previous tutorials. As you recall, so far we've installed the IS and application server roles, added a client to the domain using offline domain join, uh, things like that. But now we are going to head back to our WSUS server that we have also installed in a previous video. And we're going to look at actually setting this server up initially so we can push down automatic updates within our organization right from this server. This is a benefit because we don't need all of those different workstations or domain controllers or member servers on our network to go out to Microsoft's update site and automatically pull those down. As an administrator, we want to be able to test in our lab, it's very important, in our lab, um, all critical updates that might go out across our network. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at a couple of the options here in the WSUS uh, server console. And you can just get to that by going start, administrative tools, and it will actually add this um, Microsoft management console. It's called the MMC to your administrative tools. So that's how I opened this here. So what you'll notice is the interface is very simple. It's got a tree-like structure like most other Microsoft products. We haven't really done anything with this. It's very bare. Uh, there are groups that can be populated. You can make um, different groups. So for example, let's say you had all of your servers and you wanted to create a group just for your your servers so you can apply different settings just based on groups so we're gonna add a new group and you can just say servers very very simple if you had workstations you could do the same thing add computer group workstation so you may deploy different updates from servers or workstations obviously the operating systems are going to be different things of that nature. Um, you can use these groups to integrate with Active Directory. So it's a good feature. Um, just take note of that. We're going to be using it in the next video. Something else to look at is the options panel. If you remember when we first did the install we were selected as to what sort of products we would like to download updates for. What our synchronization schedule was. Um, in my case I initially wanted to set up this server to replicate at 1 a.m. when nobody would be on the network but I accidentally clicked 1 p.m. in the video so I'm gonna fix that and it's gonna be synchronized automatically um, also the types of a proxy server the products and classifications this one's gonna be a big one so as you recall when we first did the install we only were downloading Microsoft Office well, if you look through, if people aren't using, for example, Visual Studio, you don't need that. Let's say right now we don't have an Exchange server, but in the future we will be adding one. We can come back here and we can select updates for our particular version of Exchange. So this is very important. You can find all of Microsoft's products in here. Right now, we just have a couple of things on the network, so we don't really need to worry too much about it. We are going to be updating Windows 7 maybe we don't need the language packs because we're only going to speak in English we only you know have computers that are uh, used by native speakers so we can adjust all these settings here um, we can specify how to assign different computers we are actually going to be using group policy so we won't really have to worry about that too much but we are going to use group policy so we're going to select that and now uh, some reports you can view here we did install that report viewer. I did post a link to that install in the blog. Um, so for example, computer status summary. Let's take a look at this. We're going to run the report, take a look, see what our systems have done. And look, we don't have any systems that have updated with the WSUS server so far. So again, this is a pretty clean, pristine server. Um, we can take a look at when our synchronizations have ran. So we pull down stuff at on 8.12 when I first installed it, the 14th, 15th, we've, we've been pulling down very, very, very regularly. So um, that's good. We want to be able to track these things. One thing that's very important are our updates. So as you can see, it can be pretty overwhelming when you first open up this console and you haven't approved anything. There is right now 
5,249 updates. Um, that's a lot. So we haven't gone through and approved or denied any, which is really one of the great feature about WSUS. Uh, I can recall for an example when we were deploying a, a security fix in an environment that I worked on and it happened to modify a DLL of a custom application that we used. Well, Unfortunately, we didn't test in a lab, which was a bad decision, and it brought down production servers. So with this, you can actually go through and approve or decline which updates that you want your network to spread. So, you know, we only know that we have Windows 7 um, workstations. We don't have any Windows XP, any, any 2000, but we may be pulling those down. So how can we, can we pull a lot of the kind of junk out of here? Not junk, but things we're not using. So, for example, if we go Windows, let's say XP, we know we don't have any Windows XP clients on the network, so we're we're gonna deny those straight away. And look, so we search for Windows XP. Let me just expand this so you can see it a little bit more. And as you can see, we have all these updates from Microsoft Windows XP. Critical updates. Critical updates. Now, if we had Windows XP clients. Yes, we would definitely want to, um, you know, deploy these across our network, but we don't. Um, and therefore, what we're going to do is we can actually highlight all of these updates for Windows XP. We're going to right click and we are just going to decline because we don't want those 994 updates to go out across our network. So it's just going to go through and decline these updates. If it takes a while, I'll skip ahead in the video and we can meet on the other side. Okay, so we're just going to cancel that out because it was taking an excessive amount of time. But what we're going to do here is we do know that we have Windows 7 workstations on our network. So let's do find now for Windows 7. So look, we have a pretty large amount of Windows 7 updates as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to do the same thing because we know that we want to keep our Windows 7 systems up to date. We want these service packs to go out and we want our workstations to be secure. One of the biggest reasons for security breaches in an environment is simply because systems are not patched. It's very, very important that we keep our systems patched. So we're going to go through and we're going to select approve and what we're gonna do is look it actually says where do you want to approve these two so we have these groups that we made so we're gonna go through select our workstation and we're gonna do approve for install We're gonna select our servers nope we searched for Windows 7 so we don't really need those um, installs there and unassigned computers we just want to install for our workstations so we're gonna go OK and I'm going to just wait for this to run. I'm sorry this is taking a moment, but I wanted you to see the process of how this works. We are just about finished up here. Hopefully it'll just take a second more. You can see it does look like we are getting some errors, but we can resolve those. Okay, so completed with errors. See below. Yep, we do see that. Um, we do have some errors, but that's okay. We can probably revisit those. So what we're going to do is we're going to close this out. So thank you for joining us for this video. I hope you join us for the next one where we actually go through and set up the system and group policy and you continue to follow along after that. See you soon.